Debbie churned on a west by northwesterly course. Its track was projected to take it right over the Virgin Islands. There, a local radio director said, while they're still rebuilding from destructive past storms, they're in much better shape to weather this one. I believe the islands probably could have fared pretty well even if Hurricane Debbie would have been a Category 2 or even a Category 3 storm. A minimal Category 1 hurricane at the present time. I believe some property damage, maybe one or two downed lines, downed utility poles, but perhaps for the better part of both the public and the private sector, I believe the buildings would have fared well. Well, his last estimate was that St. Thomas and St. Croix would be spared the direct lashes of the hurricane. But what is the latest outlook for Puerto Rico? For that, let's go to the news director of WOSO Radio in San Juan, Gary Tumanen. He joins us now live on the phone. Hello, Gary. Hello, David. Gary, what Debbie, is the expectation in Puerto Rico as to the effects of the uh, hurricane, Betty? Well, Debbie, in fact, will not become the fourth hurricane to make landfall in Puerto Rico over the last 12 years. In fact, the storm is beginning to produce just tropical storm force winds and rain as it passes by as much as 30 miles to the northeast. We can expect some three to six inches of rain, but what passes will be the weaker side of the hurricane, the southern quadrant. So we are looking much better than we did this morning. Well, that's very good news. Now, you've taken a lot of uh, whippings from the last several hurricanes, including problems with the continuing problems with the water supply, flooding, etc. Do you expect anything like that as a result of this? The water has been returned. It was off the day before. Uh, we don't have any indication of any electrical uh, power outages, a few trees down. But for the most part, people are just glad it's over. The governor did declare a state of emergency and canceled all police leaves. He prohibited the sale of alcoholic beverages. And the federal courts and the audience public schools were all closed. All precautionary measures, the governor not indicating when he'll lift that emergency. But one thing is certain, a lot of people have supplies now on hand that they don't need right at the moment, but with the peak of the season not until September, those stored yep. goods may well still come yes. in handy. Thank you, Gary. Things looking much better in Puerto Rico than people had feared. Gary Tuman in, in Puerto Rico giving us that live phone report. I'm David Diaz in the newsroom. Back to you, Angela. David, thank you so much. Meteorologist Tony Pan has been tracking Hurricane Debbie in our weather center. He's here now with the very latest for us. Tony. Angela, it looks like uh, Hurricane Debbie is going to just scoot just in the north of Puerto Rico at the present time. It's moving through the U.S. and British Virgin Islands right now. It's just a minimal hurricane, uh, maximum sustained wind, 75 miles per hour. So as we were saying just a few moments ago, that's not going to produce a lot of damage. The forecast track takes it up towards the Bahamas here over the next couple of days. And then we could see some trouble because by that time it's going to get over some warmer water as it heads up towards the Bahamas and the southeast coast of the United States over the next two or three days. It could become a major hurricane by Thursday or Friday. And what I mean by that is maximum sustained winds up around 100 miles per hour. So this could be a problem for Florida and definitely the Bahamas and maybe the southeast coastline as we head towards the upcoming weekend. And it will be a lot stronger than it is now. We'll talk more about Debbie and what's in store for us here at home when I come back in just a few minutes. For now, we'll send it back over to Angela. Okay, thanks, Tony. And stay right here for continuing coverage of Hurricane Debbie. We'll be watching the storm very closely all afternoon as it picks up strength and zeroes in on Puerto Rico. And of course, we'll have the very latest on Hurricane Debbie starting on News 2 at 5. From rumblings in the sky above Puerto Rico to rattling on the ground right here in our area. Last night, an earthquake shook parts of Dutchess, Putnam, and Fairfield counties. The quake was centered in Carmel, about 55 miles from Manhattan, and woke people from their sleep as far away as Danbury, Connecticut. News reporter Pablo Guzman is live in Carmel with more on this unusual event. Pablo. How you doing? Actually, the experts and earthquake elitists like my wife, who's from Southern California and is razzing me all morning, you're making a big deal out of a 2.5? Ha! And her name is Debbie, by the way. The experts don't call this an earthquake, but a tremor. Be that as it may, folks in these parts, well, it scared the bejesus out of them. You're just not supposed to feel something like a quake in these parts, not in Carmel. It's because your customers and the beauty parlor, mm -hmm. what are they saying? What were they saying? One person thought it was thunder. Uh -huh. Another person thought that their kid fell out of bed upstairs. Uh -huh. Another guy thought that it was his waterbed. Something happened to his waterbed. He started waving. His you waterbed. know, the waterbed thought he was going to... I don't even want to go there. My wife and I were both asleep, sound asleep. And uh, at about, I think, 10 minutes to 2, thereabouts, uh, we both uh, woke up at the same time. My wife said, you know, what was that? Now, when I came over to the table, what was the first thing you told me? Uh, we survived the earthquake. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was reported as a tremor. 25 calls came into the sheriff's 911 command center, and another 90 to 100 flooded the phone line. 
the building started to shake a little bit, and uh, immediately thereafter, uh, the phone started to light up uh, from four towns in our county reporting a tremor activity. We had people coming out of the bars and yelling and screaming. I said, well, we had an earthquake. But uh, some of the people that came out of the bars, they must have had something else going on. <laughs> they shake most of the nights up there. <laughs> as far as quakes go, this was a mere bump on the cosmic road, but they felt it from Carmel all the way to Brookfield outside of Danbury and also over to Poughkeepsie. But I've been through an earthquake out in California. The real ones. The real one <laughs> where the earth shook. and uh, But it, it wasn't anything near that. It was simply a large uh, bang. And, and you could almost think that your first thought is that maybe your oil burner backfired. You heard this, huh? I blamed the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret is great. Now, you see, you don't think of fault lines here, but this is the second time in some 12 or 14 years that some underground activity registered on the Richter scale. And while we're having some fun with it and people around here are laughing about it, there were no windows broken, nobody got hurt. What a lot of people are saying to us is, you know, a bit further south where the Indian Point nuclear reactor is, well, that's right on top of a bigger fault line than this one. Imagine building a nuclear plant on a fault line. Reporting live from Carmel, not Carmel, Carmel, Pablo Guzman, News 2. Thank you, Pablo. Four years after TWA Flight 800 plunged into the Atlantic, killing everyone on board, federal investigators are ready to confirm what they've long suspected, that the jumbo jet was blown apart in flight by an explosion in the center fuel tank. News 2 reporter Paul Florangez has more on the final report. It was not a bomb. Calling it a tragic event that stirred strong emotions throughout this country and the world, National Transportation Safety Board Chairman Jim Hall declared that a short-circuit spark followed by an explosion of the fuel tanks, doomed the doomed plane, killing all 230 passengers and crew. After conducting a thorough investigation, the FBI suspended its investigation in November 1997, indicating that no evidence had been found to indicate that a criminal act was the cause of the tragedy of TWA Flight 800. Investigators said today that radar data showed the in-flight breakup of the jumbo jet occurred in three stages. The first in the forward portion of the plane near the center wing fuel tank. That the initial breakup sequence and early departure of pieces from in and around the center wing tank clearly indicate that the breakup was initiated by an overpressure inside the center wing tank. Investigators recovered an amazing 95% of the wreckage, using those pieces to reconstruct the aircraft. None of those pieces contain residue from explosives, but what investigators did find was damage and deterioration of the wiring outside the fuel tank. It's those clues that makes them believe that contributed to the explosion. As for theories that still abound that the doomed jet was doomed by a missile as part of some sinister government plot, NTSB Chairman Hall told victims' families to ignore such claims. Those who consistently distort the record and persist in making unfounded charges of a cover-up. They do a disservice to all of us, but most especially to you. In Manhattan, Paul Florangis, News 2. The hearings continue through tomorrow. That's when a final report by the NTSB is expected. The war on drug smuggling and terrorism is going high-tech. A super x-ray called the body scanner is now being used at local airports, but it's stirring up quite a controversy. There is concern the scanner, which can see right through clothing, is way too personal. News 2 reporter Sukanya Krishnan is live at Newark Airport with the story. Sukanya. That's right, Cindy. Gets down and out personal. Can you say this body scanner actually gets down to the naked truth? Picture this. These scanners actually take permanent body images of uh, people's bodies. It could actually show someone's navel. It could actually get down to their body hairs. And some voyeurs are even are blushing at this. Talk about x-ray vision, Superman. This new high-tech scanner can see everything, and I mean everything. Oh, I think it's just intrusive. Do you think it's just gone way too far where yeah. you can see the definition of your body? Yes. This x-ray eye isn't your typical metal detector, which is in every airport. This $140,000 scanning machine can peep under your clothes and a few millimeters beneath your skin. That's right, you can make out the shape of your navel and even see chest hairs. This has privacy experts screaming, 
way too intrusive. But not everyone has to go through the x-ray eye. According to officials, it's only one out of every 2,000 people that are chosen. They're also given a choice either go through the scanner or be patted down. Now, if they do choose to go through the scanner, they do have to sign a consent form. But for Linda and Bill Gerwick from Union, New Jersey, they say this machine gives them the peace of mind they need to take to the sky. It's a good idea because a lot of people know how to smuggle drugs in and nobody can detect them. So if this thing is going to take that kind of pictures, I think it's a great idea. So you don't feel it's uh, violating your privacy? I, not at all. Not mine. There's been so many accidents and everything on the airlines. Um, they shouldn't be hassled. So this gives you the peace of mind and security that you need to travel in the air? Exactly. Anybody on board carrying concealed weapons or whatever, you know, it just feel more secure. Well, since its debut here at Newark and Kennedy Airport, they have been able to nab at least 20 feet, 25 people who have actually tried to smuggle drugs. And a lot of the people that I spoke to that are getting on planes today, they, they say they'll do whatever they have to to get a peace of mind. And if they have to bear all, so be it. Live at Newark Airport, I'm Sukanya Krishnan, News 2. At this hour, police are investigating a gruesome murder mystery on the Upper West Side. Police discovered the body of a 65-year-old woman yesterday in her apartment on West 92nd Street. They say she was bound and gagged with a plastic bag over her head. At this point, there are no suspects. A national day of mourning is declared in Russia for the 118 sailors who lost their lives at the bottom of the Barents Sea. Distraught relatives arrived in Murmansk by train, many demanding to be taken to the Arctic Circle where the bodies of the crew are still trapped in the wreck of the Kursk. And in local churches, mourners clung to each other in tears, offering prayers for the young men. Meanwhile, the commander of the Northern Fleet appeared on Russian television to make an emotional apology to the relatives of the sailors who died. Much more ahead now on News 2 at noon, including the very latest on Hurricane Debbie. Meteorologist Tony Pan is tracking the position of the storm and its strength. He'll have a late update along with our weather. Also, an unprecedented move by Ford, stopping production on popular SUVs. It all has to do with that massive tire recall. Plus, just one day to go until the huge Survivor finale. We're going to tell you about the rooting section for one of the most controversial contestants. Stay with News 2 at noon. News 2 closed captioning is brought to you by Toyota. Real values every day. Medicare medication coverage. Hi, my name's Bob, and I'm a Medicare recipient. Like many of you, I have respiratory problems, but my inhalers are difficult to use, and I'm not getting the relief I need. Are you? A friend told me about Med for Homes medication program. I qualified, and now Medicare helps cover my breathing medications in liquid form and I get the relief I need. So if you're using Proventil or Albuterol, Atrovent or Combivent, call Med for Home to see if you qualify. Have you noticed anything different lately? Like no more tobacco billboards or cartoon characters selling cigarettes and tobacco logos aren't put on clothing or merchandise anymore. Why? Because America's major tobacco companies signed a tobacco settlement agreement that restricts the marketing of tobacco products and provides $1.5 billion to fund youth anti-smoking ads and education. Things are changing, and at Philip Morris, we wanted you to know. Back to school is the perfect time to get AOL. It's the ultimate school supply. It's like a library in my kitchen here. Oh, yeah, I use homework help a lot. And on AOL, you can do all your back-to-school shopping. Shopping's very easy on AOL. It's the easiest way to stay in touch. You've got mail. <laughs> all of my friends are on AOL. And with AOL, your privacy and security are always protected. I trust AOL. Before you go back to school, join America Online. So easy to use, no wonder it's number one. Call 1-800-4-ONLINE. Ford is temporarily stopping production at three plants to help in the massive Firestone recall. One of those plants is in Edison, New Jersey. It'll shut down next Monday for 10 days, so tires slated for new vehicles can be used in the recall instead. Ford CEO explained the unprecedented move in a TV ad that ran last night on primetime. Federal officials are investigating 62 deaths that could be linked to the recalled tires. In our Market Watch this noon, all eyes are on the Fed. In just two hours, we're going to know the fate of interest rates. For what Wall Street is expected to do, let's go to Alexis Christophorus, live at the NASDAQ site at Times Square. Alexis. Well, Cindy, that's right. Fed Chief Alan Greenspan and company are meeting behind closed doors at this hour in Washington to decide the fate of U.S. interest rates. And consensus on the street is for no change. Right now, we have an up picture on Wall Street ahead of that interest rate decision. The Dow Industrials up. 
76 points now at 11,156. And the NASDAQ coming along nicely with a gain of 26 points. Now, investors will be listening very closely for any clues about what the Fed will do in the future months with interest rates. But with a presidential election right around the corner in November, a lot of the economists I spoke to say they believe the Fed is done raising interest rates for the rest of the year. Taking a look at some winners and losers today, MP3.com is up 28%. The Internet Music Company and Sony have reached a settlement to end a copyright infringement lawsuit. But DrCoop.com under the weather again. It is down 14%, trading just under $2 a share. The company got a $20 million infusion of cash today. Should be good news for the company. Investors think it's just a band-aid, and DrCoop.com will wind up filing for bankruptcy. We're live at the NASDAQ market side in Times Square. I'm Alexis Christophorus, CBS Market Watch. Thank you, Alexis. Still ahead, don't miss the latest in the countdown to the Million Dollar Survivor finale. And an update on actress Anne Hay. She was hospitalized after her breakup with comedian Ellen DeGeneres. Plus, no hurricane weather here. Meteorologist Tony Pan is in for Ira with more on our beautiful weather. Stay tuned. Coming up on Inside Edition, the dance moves some say are way too sexy for girls as young as seven. See what parents don't want those dancing girls doing. Plus, America's most famous sex symbol hid something under her clothes. Marilyn Monroe's secret figure enhancer. Inside Edition's today at 3.30 right here on CBS2. Shady Brook Farms. We're kind of freaks about freshness. The Quality Housing Act to dramatically improve public housing. The Empowering Our Educators Act to get better trained teachers into the classroom. The Breast and Cervical Cancer Treatment Act to help low-income women get treatment. These are all significant pieces of legislation that have passed the U.S. Congress. Who is the congressman behind all this legislation? Rick Lazio. Eight very effective years in Congress. Rick Lazio from New York for New York. <laughs> Beth's been carrying on like this ever since I told her about my senior secure whole life insurance through HSBC. <laughs> Maybe it's because now we won't be a burden to our kids. Or because I didn't have to take a medical exam or answer a lot of personal questions. But I think it's because I took this coverage. Senior Secure Whole Life. No medical questions or exam. Acceptance guaranteed. Call toll-free 1-877-YES-HSBC. I'm going to keep my eye on her. If you've tried pastes and powders and your dentures still don't fit, try Ezo Denture Cushions. Ezo's vacuum grip fills the gap between gums and dentures, creating a grip that's long-lasting, comfortable, and secure. That's Ezo, the comfortable grip. I trust my pharmacist. He knows medicine. And he knows me. So when he recommended Percogesic for my headache, I listened. He said Percogesic is unlike any other pain reliever, and it works. It's simple. I trust my pharmacist, and he trusts Percogesic. Watch Vivica A. Fox, Alita Ling, James Masters, and Carmen Electra next Hollywood Squares. Tonight at 7.30 on CBS2. We're just talking about this gorgeous weather. Oh, it's beautiful. Picture perfect, That's huh, right. Tony? And Tony, luckily, this today, you get to be outside to enjoy. Yesterday, we made you stay in here. <laughs> I know. I get to go outside today. And it's a wonderful day for that, obviously, uh, to do anything outdoors. A little breeze, no humidity. Temperatures in the 70s right now for this time of the year. It doesn't get any better. So it's nice here. Let's take a look at a different view of what's going on. 72 degrees, mostly sunny skies. We're going to take a shot of midtown of Manhattan here. Enjoy the beautiful skyline. Just a couple scattered clouds here and there. Not as crystal clear as yesterday, but so what? It's still an outstanding day. Let's talk about the weather, about uh, what's happening here at home right now. As I mentioned, temperatures are in the low 70s, a little below normal for this time of the year. 73 here in the city, 71 degrees up in Newton. And there's not a whole lot to talk about weather-wise, except a few of those scattered clouds. Nearest rain is out in the Midwest. That will arrive here Wednesday night and maybe into 
Thursday morning. But the graphics uh, were our forecast for this afternoon, calling for mostly sunny skies. As I mentioned, highs would be in the upper 70s to around 80 degrees, uh, maybe a little bit cooler to the north. Overnight tonight, it'll be very comfortable once again. We expect the temperatures to drop into the low 50s in most locales, and that's certainly good sleeping weather, especially around the northern part of New Jersey and back into Rockland County up to the north. Newburgh checking in at 54 tonight. 64 in the city, you always get that heat island effect, whereas if you're in Manhattan, it's usually about 10 degrees warmer than it is in the suburbs. That was the case last night, and that will be the case again tonight. Five-day forecast. Scattered showers and thunderstorms possible late tomorrow afternoon and into tomorrow night. They could even linger into Thursday morning. But I think it's just going to be widely scattered hit and miss kind of stuff, not a widespread rain. High temperatures tomorrow will be in the upper 70s. Again, in the upper 70s on Thursday if that front clears the area. And if we look forward to the weekend, sunshine comes back Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. If you're a summer weather fan, it'll be back into the 80s by that time. The normal high is 83, 84. So it'll be much better in that respect over the weekend. Now, we have to say that we have to watch the track of Hurricane Debbie because the long-range forecast has it approaching the southeast coast of the United States late in the weekend. And by that time, it is projected to be a major hurricane, meaning the sustained winds will be up over 100 miles per hour. This is something we're going to talk about for the next several days. It could even affect the weather here in New York. There's an outside chance of that early next week. So we'll keep an eye on it. Uh, Craig will be in at 5 o'clock or 4 o'clock, rather, with an update on Hurricane Debbie. For now, we'll send it back inside. Ladies, get out and enjoy it if you can after the news. Great. We want to come out and celebrate with your birthday, boy. Yes. Oh, Lord. Happy birthday, Tony. <laughs> it's good to be 25. It's better ah, the second time. And holding, that's right. Yeah, it's better the second time. 25. It was nice to meet your beautiful wife and daughter who came to surprise you. Yes, yeah, they're right over there. Too shy to come on camera. Oh, right okay. Happy Bye, birthday. Tony. Thanks, guys. And when we come back, actress Anne Heche is back on the job after an emergency visit to the hospital. Also, the rooting section from one of the Survivor Final Four. We'll be right back. Turned down again? Can't anyone help me get the loan I need to buy a car? Bad credit, divorce, bankruptcy, repossession. No problem. Even if you've been turned down before, 1-800-BUY-A-CAR can get you the loan you need in minutes. And right now, you can get a great deal on this Kia Sportage SUV, Sepia, or Spectra hatchback for very little down and super low payments. I called 1-800-BUY-A-CAR and got the loan I needed and a great deal on this car. Thank you, 1-800-BUY-A-CAR. Call now. From the 1930s through the 70s, men and women worked hard to keep America strong in shipyards, powerhouses, and construction throughout New York. They were unaware of the silent killer, asbestos, that gave many of them mesothelioma, lung cancer, or asbestosis. If you are an asbestos victim or a surviving relative, call Weitz and Luxembourg at 1-888-411-LAWS for a consultation and booklet. Weitz and Luxembourg, setting the standard in asbestos litigation for over a decade. Moms know calcium helps build strong bones, but did you know it helps build strong minds, too? Neurons in your brain need calcium to transmit signals. Without it, they can be, well, a little slow. Let's see what happens when you give them soft, delicious Wonder Bread, a good source of calcium with vitamins and minerals. Missy, go do your homework. Let's go, guys. Time to do homework. I've never seen anything like it. Calcium helps you remember things, too. So remember, Wonder helps build strong bodies and minds. The Parkinson's Unity Walk will be held Sunday, September 24th in Central Park. Every dollar raised will go to research for a cure. Call 212-580-6505. The Ellen and Ann breakup, why they split, and Ann's medical condition, plus the Survivor finale and Ted Turner's new girlfriend, XDP. Tonight at 7 on CBS2. Remember D.B. Cooper? He was the skyjacker who parachuted out of a jet and disappeared with a fortune. Or did he? It just all went. It's like a puzzle coming together. Was her deceased husband the legendary D.B. Cooper? See her evidence and then decide tonight on the CBS Evening News with Dan Rather. Tonight on 60 Minutes 2, what made these elephants go on a rampage? Plus the genius behind the hottest boy bands. Tonight at 9, 8 Central. Christine Baranski stars as New York's toughest producer. I shouldn't have to tell an anchor woman that it's pronounced Giuliani, not Guilini. Welcome to New York, a new comedy coming to CBS. Well, it's one more day to the big finale of the CBS hit Survivor, and the people who run Gillian's Bar in Norfolk, Virginia, think they know who's going to take home the millions. They're betting on Rudy, the former Navy SEAL. He lives nearby, and as the bar owners told the early show, Gillian's is packed with Rudy Rooters every Wednesday night, but of course, Rudy will be up against some 
pretty tough competitors, three other competitors. You can find out who's going to be the sole survivor tomorrow night and the big million-dollar winner. That's beginning at 7.30 with a News 2 preview special. Then at 8, the two-hour finale, followed by a survivor town meeting at 10. And, of course, we'll have a complete wrap-up on News 2 at 11. People making news this noon, Anne Hayes. She is in Toronto right now, where witnesses say she seemed dazed and tired when she arrived yesterday. On Saturday, Hayes was hospitalized briefly after what was described as bizarre behavior. Police say the actress left her car by the side of the road near Fresno, California, knocked on someone's door, and began talking incoherently. This happened just hours after her breakup from girlfriend Ellen DeGeneres became public. Now a look at what's ahead for News 2 at 4. Here are Dana Tyler and Stephen Clark. There is this wonderful... Coming up today on News 2 at 4, do you slant to the right or to the left when you write? At 4, what your penmanship says about your personality. Also, what's old is new again. We're going to show you how to salvage those vintage wares in your grandma's closet. Plus, model-turned-actress Famke Jansen is at it again, this time with her first-ever romantic comedy. She joins us live what? at 4 to tell us all about love and sex. Oh, she will. She will. Join us at 4. <laughs> everything <laughs> well we'll certainly have to stick around for that yeah. one <laughs> all right well that wraps up news two at noon today i'm angela ray and you know what i just want to take this moment to say welcome welcome you. you and michael pomerantz will be doing the noon and i'll be seeing you in the morning and this is the best crew in the whole universe oh, so yeah take good care of thank them thank you i, I love them i will all right well, thanks for joining us have a great afternoon Ah, your dream home. <laughs> you thought it was too good to be true. And you were right. Honey, honey, wake up. The appraiser, remember? With HUD's FHA Home Buyer Protection Plan, you get the right loan, a fair price, and a thorough appraisal. If any problems are found, you'll know about them before you close. 30 million Americans have trusted us to build their dreams. Call for information on HUD Homes and FHA loans. HUD and FHA are on your side. I'm Todd McDermott. I'm Cindy Shu. I'm Sean, and I just got kicked off the island. Wednesday at 7.30, go behind the scenes on CBS 2 Survivor Preview. An inside look at life on the island. And boy, do we have stories to tell. Medicare medication coverage. Hi, my name's Bob, and I'm a Medicare recipient. Like many of you, I have respiratory problems, but my inhalers are difficult to use, and I'm not getting the relief I need. Are you? A friend told me about Med for Homes medication program. I qualified, and now Medicare helps cover my breathing medications in liquid form, and I get the relief I need. So if you're using Provental or Albuterol, Atrovent, or Combavent, call Med for Home to see if you qualify. Watching TV, you sit, you point, you click. Now online banking and investing is just that easy with Fleet Home Link. Sean Jack. What are you talking about? You can do it, big guy. Banking online? Way too complicated. Look, just log on, enter your card number and password. You're ready to bank. You can check balances, transfer funds. You won't even miss an inning. Hey, what else can I do? Want to pay bills online? Not exactly what I had in mind, but okay. Jack, I'm impressed. Yeah, me too. No, with that balance. Ever consider a little investing? Let me guess. You've got an answer for that too. Two words, Jack. Quick and Riley. The brokerage guy? Hey, if I can link a Quick and Riley account with my checking account, I could trade a lot easier. Glad you met me, huh? Sign up for Fleet Home Link. Log on to Fleet.com today. Home Link, online banking and investing. What could be easier? I don't know. Your job? Fleet Home Link. No easier way to manage your money. She's controversial, outspoken, candid, blunt. She speaks her mind regardless of the consequences. Dr. Laura is coming to CBS 2, weekdays at 3, starting September 11th. Now, see what everybody's talking about.